hi everyone and welcome back so uh, let's do the part two of the previous video and i also want to talk about okay this is the playlist which we are covering it has lots of videos so don't get confused if you are just checking these videos out in order there would be no any issue these are perfectly aligned and in a perfect order so we are covering just the last few set of videos where we are covering tcp based kafka or RabbitMQ based microservices in the nest chase then we can wrap up this particular playlist because we will be done with the overall the microservice concepts microservices how we are building it how all these things are happening then we can focus more on the other playlist coming to this we were talking about this architecture from the previous video and now we are going to build these TCP based microservices. We will see how they looks like, what is the difference between uh, creating a simple REST based service and a TCP uh, or a simple NestJS microservice. Till now most of my video sessions or trainings I covered only the REST based NestJS microservice. But what if you want to create a TCP based or RabbitMQ, Kafka or EMQP based microservice which is a lightweight. Here we have two TCP based services, user service and auth service. And if you look into the main.ts, here you will see the big difference. Here, what are the other options? Create application context, create microservice. In default, we create a create application context. But if we, here we are using NestJS microservices, so we are calling create microservice. And then create microservice, the root module and the other options are transport and the options. Transport, what all transport it supports, like uh, you can pass gRPC, Kafka and all. If you are using gRPC, then you have to also specify the proto files and you have to write a gRPC methods. MQTT, Kafka, Redis, RMQ, here we are talking about TCP. And this is the options, this is the host and port for your TCP uh, microservice. So the client would know, okay, this is the host, this is the port and this is the transport. I can connect to that TCP service running somewhere. Okay, rest all the things are same. The user module here we have a user entity. I mean, it's the whole NestJS structure we create. We you import all the modules, database module, type RM module, uh, JWT, NestJS, JWT module, and then user controller and user service. Inside controller, it's not going to have the default methods of the rest apis like controller is we were also creating controller there here also we see the controller but the difference is we are not writing at the rate get at the rate port at the rate post and patch all these methods here we are using message pattern and the event pattern message pattern when you are requesting a response back pro, from the the caller whoever is calling it so these are the different actions it is supporting and TCP client can send these actions with the payload like search params, simple ID and user params. So another service is the token service. There also we are doing something similar. Here this is also using the transport. Here we do have a different port because how we are getting these ports and all. We are using same config module everywhere. And we are having a local env.example. I mean the local env file in each and every service. And we are using this dot uh, env to populate this process to populate this dot env inside a process dot env. So we get the host for database details and all because we are using type or a module that requires a database and we are using we have these two different database token API database and the user API database. And this is the port 3003 that is running on 3004 and gateway here we need to specify the ports of both the services 3003 3004 this is the auth service user service and the gateway now let's see a simple example a simple demo okay here i'm able to log in i can just you can see we are getting a token that's fine here i'm trying to get user by id i mean it's just going to give you all the users it's coming forbidden why that is coming because I added this user route as a protected route. So we'll go to our user service, our gateway, and this is our controller. 
here let's see our first route which is get user by token so what it is expecting okay you should you should send authorization token then only i will allow you to access this so we have this authorized true what this is doing is this annotation is just putting the token putting this uh, secured true this is like a metadata and we are already registering this auth guard at the application level so this is like app guard in the app guard we have registered auth guard you can see authorization guard so this is registered at the app level means all the routes will use it but we have we are consuming it only where the secured is true and how we are populating secured true through the controller in the controller if you are using this as a false that means we are not using this auth card if you are passing it true so what this annotation is doing it is populating this secured value flag secured metadata as a true if you pass false it will set the secured metadata as a false and then inside this auth guard authorization guard if the secured value which is coming you, you are we are using reflector api to get what is the value of secured which you have set in the controller if it is true then we are good if it is false then we don't need to check or anything else we will allow user to access but if it is true that means we need to check are you sending me this authorization header if yes if no first of all the api is secured and you are not sending me this authorization header i think we are not sending the authorization header here it's a, that's why it's forbidden resource we are sending a written false let's say you are sending it but the token is not you can also decode the token currently the the syntax of the token i'm expecting is bearer and the token string so i'm splitting it and i'm sending this token to the decode token uh, action so this is going to the uh, microservice tcp means micro microservice which is accepting this token payload it will just check okay this token ha has been created with the same secret key and it should be able to decode it so token decode if you see what it is there it is created inside our auth service inside controller if you see decode token so what it is doing is it is decoding it and uh, it is just checking okay this token is exist in the database then checking the expiry and all and sending it that's it otherwise what you can do is i mean there are many ways to verify the token jwt.sign and jwt.verify you if you are not storing it in the database you can just do a jwt.verify i want to i because jwt tokens the prime objective is stateless you create a token and you just verify it and you can generate n number of tokens they, they will be available till they expired right okay so this is just a demo and here we are calling this if the token info is there then we are good and then then we can call this other tcp microservice user service client dot send get user by id because i got my user id from the token payload okay so what we will do is first we will do the login I got this uh, token. I will add this token in the authorization, and then I can call this get users. And you can see I'm able to access this API, right? It's not magic. It's like first you are sending this token to your token microservice. It is saying everything is good. Then you will be calling the user microservice, which is just doing. Uh, this should be some query okay user entity which is just a, like a select query okay give me this user based on this user id okay so this is like a plain and simple uh, integration we have done through two tcp based microservice from the gateway service which is exposing rest interface now same example we can change the the mechanism here here instead of uh, using tcp service there can be another service which is using kafka rabbitmq or redis then we will just have another service which is exposing let's say this is uh, domain apis domain service okay 
and instead of PCP what you are doing is this is the client there will be a client for this service you will send a message like this is a using redis this is using redis as a transport that means this service is a subscriber to the redis host and you have a redis running somewhere and this gateway this client will send a message to the redis host i mean the redis server and then this domain service is, which is using the redis transport will be listening to that server it will receive that particular event and you should be able to do particular actions so this is like a publisher and subscriber it's not like a request and reply it's like fire and forget uh, you can send a particular uh, action and then based on that actions this uh, domain service will receive it that event pattern and then you can just act on that value or act on that and just do with them that redis data similarly there can be a revit mq kafka you send an event because these are the message pattern event pattern is a send email right that is a fire and forget so you are uh, you will send it to the kafka and then there is a kafka listener service using the kafka as a transport will listen to that and we'll get the payload okay send this email to this email payload email id and this is the, the email data it will send it so there will be a listener service where we will write that logic okay so this is pretty much about uh, the idea of uh, tcp based microservices now what you can do is in the same monorepo we can attach other services i can just use this monorepo to extend this and add couple of more microservices using other transports and we will see the demo uh, thanks everyone so this is just like a simple example what i will do i will push this code to the github with the proper readme file you can play around and see if it fits whatever you are building it's good to learn something uh, new out of the box instead of building just rest based uh, apis we are doing since a long time okay thanks everyone thanks for watching